uh, we are discussing about btech civil engineering sixth semester transportation engineering that is uh, which can, comes under the kt university this is for sixth semester <coughs> students so uh, the syllabus contains six modules uh, some students have uh, don't know that uh, how to Uh, what is that mark distribution from each module for the ktu university examination that is uh, the syllabus contains five, five module six modules <coughs> the first four modules from each modules uh, six 15 marks will be there mark distribution so so uh, 15 into 4 60 marks uh, and last two modules five and six uh, <laughs> Uh, each module contains 20 marks so 20 plus 20 40 so, uh, uh, total 100 marks <coughs> and uh, this syllabus contains uh, highway engineering uh, that is part one transportation engineering contains highway engineering and airport engineering the first four modules is regarding with the highway engineering that is road engineering and uh, last two modules uh, contains airport engineering so I am today we I am uh, going to discuss about the uh, module one that is introduction to transportation engineering, uh, classification of roads and typical cross section of roads in urban and urban and uh, rural areas. So this is the first one uh, module one. It it is introduction to transportation engineering. So uh, we all know that transportation engineering is a branch of civil engineering. That is uh, it deals with application of technology and um, uh, management of facilities for mode of transportation uh, that is it contains uh, designing and constructions of various mode of transportations various modes of transportations means uh, railways road transport air transports ropeways pipe pipelines etc so uh, in the KTU syllabus, we are actually discussing the uh, three main parts, that is three main different modes, railways, road transport and air transport. Railways you will study in the seventh semester. Okay, so uh, this is a different modes of transport and transportation engineering actually it says uh, it deals with designing, constructing and maintaining different modes of transportation that is construction of roads or construction of railways or uh, we have to design uh, the roads uh, as we all know that uh, super elevation and that much and among different modes of transportation road is one of the main economical mode of transportation that is it is one of the most effective and it is the most preferred mode of transportation. This is the introduction of transportation engineering. Now we are go moving to characteristics of road transport. As I had already said that for the construction of uh, roads or uh, for the designing of roads, uh, um, uh, construction of roads includes map preparation, recognition of surveys, different types of surveys. Before uh, con construction of uh, roads, we have to fix the alignment of roads that we will study in, in the coming sessions. That is a uh, uh, highway alignment. So the, these all activities are very low and cheap activities and flexible surveys. Um, and more freedom to use us while traveling uh, it, it is with um, the um, that means we know that road transport is uh, can give more freedom to uh, users that is if a person is riding a car or anything else um, ability to accommodate various types of vehicles at a time quick and assured door to door services and finally faster and cheaper services particularly for short distance travel uh, for short distance travel we use road transport as you all know that for how longer distance traveling uh, we use air transport that we all know that now 
Next comes under classification of roads. That is depending on weather. There are different types of roads. That is roads are classified into two types. That is all weather roads and fair weather roads. All weather roads means the road will exist in any climatic condition. That is uh, or any season of the year the road will exist except at major river crossing where some interference to traffic is permissible that is river crossing uh, when river crossing comes we know that interruption to traffic will occur but fair weather road means these roads are operative only during dry or non monsoon season and uh, when uh, during monsoon season we can we know that during rain flood will occur and um, uh, flood will affect the road transport system and it will cause interruption to traffic next is that is uh, previously we have said that on the basis of weather we are classifying roads into two types next is on the basis of carriage ways or road pavement on the basis of pavement we are classifying two types of roads that is paved roads and unpaved roads there is paved roads means uh, we are using roads with ha uh, hard pavements or carriage ways are called paved roads uh, we know that water bound macadam we will study in later this is the example for paved roads but unpaved roads means the roads which is not having any hard surface of carriage ways carriage way means the width of the road uh, width of the road over which the vehicle is passing a considerable width of road is taken road section <laughs> uh, along that width the vehicle is pass uh, along within that width the vehicle will pass depending on the pavement surfaces uh, surface roads is there and unsurfaced roads is there surface roads means bitumen or cement concrete roads are we are used so that is um, another classification uh, and on, on the basis of general parameters uh, that is on the basis of traffic volume that how much uh, traffic volume can be occupied in a road heavy roads uh, medium roads is there low volume roads is there that is heavy roads means the congested traffic that is large volume of traffic will can be accommodated within the road <laughs> medium roads mean medium a low volume road and on the basis of low transport <coughs> that is some vehicles will uh, that is goods goods is passing uh, through vehicles <coughs> we can use goods based on the low transport we are uh, classifying vehicle as class 1 vehicle class 2 vehicle and class 3 vehicles now here comes the main important topic that is on the basis of locations and functions on the basis of locations and functions there are five different types of classification roads that is first one is national highways national highways mean actually <coughs> these are the it is a main highway running all throughout the length and breadth of india uh, which connects the major states capitals of uh, larger states or uh, industrial and commercial centers etc that is we simply say that uh, national highways are highways which connect road uh, uh, from road uh, one state to another state road is connected to national highway um, and these uh, roads and the network the maintenance and management of roads will come under the central government of india that is they have they are um, maintaining and managing these types of roads and um, the national highways comes national highway 3 national highway 9 nh9 nh3 that is nh3 is a national highway which connects bombay and agra agra is a place in uttar pradesh and bombay uh, maharashtra state uttar pradesh and maharashtra it will connect so uh, madurai rameshwaram nh9 state highways state highways are the roads within the states within the state uh, 
state highways are roads within the state that is these highways are maintained and constructed by state government under the regulations of central government so central government has rules and regulation and the state government will follow that is these are arterial roads connecting national highway it also connects national highways or important cities <coughs> within the state or major industrial sectors within the state and <coughs> for different types of highway uh, there uh, it's a specific values of design speed and geometric design specification so uh, national highway have higher design speed and geometric design specification that design speed means the speed with which uh, the vehicle can travel through that highway how much speed it can travel there will be a regulation okay so uh, comparing to national highway and state uh, comparing to national highway state highway have the, the both of them have same design speed and geometric design specification that is the uh, design of highways we are saying that is the geometric specification so i think uh, around uh, 60 km per hour is design speed no sorry 18 km per hour is for state highway and national highway now next is major district roads that is major district roads means it will connect districts serving areas of production and market that is it comes under commercial the city is having commercial development <coughs> it will connect <coughs> connect with each other so uh, but major district road when comparing to national highway and state highway major district road uh, have uh, lower speed and geometric design specification now next under other district roads other district roads are the roads serving the rural area of production that is the roads comes within the rural areas and the, it connects the rural areas to the market centers taluk headquarters or other main roads now these other district roads will have lower uh, design speed and geometric specification when compared to uh, very lower value when compared to major district roads national highway and the state highway now next comes under village roads uh, we can simply say that village roads are roads which connects villages or group of villages together to the nearest road of higher category now the important topic comes cross section of roads cross section of roads in urban or uh, rural areas but i am uh, the figure shows that high cross section of highway elements that is highway road see in this figure we can say that carriage way carriage way is the bit here we are taking this section of a road not elevation or uh, front view of a road this is a section of a road and we can see that carriage way is a considerable width we are taking in a road that is along that width of road the vehicle is passing okay that is carriage way and a carriage way plus shoulders on both side is known as road way or formation way and we can see that road margins so road way plus road margins on both side is known as road land that is this much um, space of road that is road land is this much of space of or this much of width of road is used for road constructions before road construction i have said that there is a highway element that we will discuss in the later session so road land this we have to study and uh, road boundary line is there building boundary line is there control control line is there so mainly we are focusing on uh, the what is carriage way and shoulder so these are the two major components of a road as i always say that a pavement pavement or carriage way it is a pavement is a path with hard surface usually by the side of a road that is this path is used for vehicle movement so the pavement surface should be hard 
okay and it is generally designed for movement of vehicles and carriages i as i had already said, said that width of carriageway of pavement depends on width of traffic lane and number of lanes that is we are simply saying that width of traffic lane is there that is how much width the vehicle should move width of console width of road is taken number of lanes means uh, we can say that two lane it um, may be simply saying that one way roads two way roads that is number of lanes depending upon number of lanes there will be one way roads two way roads three way roads etc shoulders shoulders are actually provided along the road edge actually it is not road it is provided along the road edge it is actually intended for accommodation of stop to vehicles or serves uh, serves as an emergency lane for vehicles that is actually it is uh, emergency situations we have to stop the car <laughs> so shoulders we are using <laughs> now next is cross section of village roads and other district roads in the rural area this it is simply say uh, <clears throat> just we you have to note the figures that much only so uh, and also i am uh, before i i had said that pavement plus shoulders on both sides is known as road way width so this figure simply shows that it shows the cross section of village roads and other district roads in rural areas that is the width of the road way is taken for this category that is village road and other district roads Uh, for this category uh, uh, the, the road width is taken as 7.8 to 8 meter and the pavement width is 3.8 meter and the land width land width is taken as 10 to 24 meter that is construction of uh, roads in village roads and other district roads will depends on this value okay longitudinal drain that is 1.5 meter that is drainage drainage with this it is showing and here we can, we can see the sloping is provided that is camphering camphor is provided in roads in order to prevent the accumulation of rainfall water that is and this rainfall water will go to the longitudinal drain when the rainfall comes there will be uh, to prevent the flood in roads we are providing camphor that we will study in later the next is showing cross section of major district roads in rural areas that is uh, the figure shows show cross section of major district roads here the road bed width is uh, 10 meter pavement width is 3.8 meter land width is 30 meter and longitudinal drain is 1.5 meter uh, sometimes the indicative exam they will ask <coughs> to explain or uh, uh, the figure is very important okay sometimes they can ask for figures they uh, sometimes uh, in the previous questions they had asked the this questions ask had asked okay so the figure is very important now cross section of national and state highways in rural areas rural areas uh, that is national and state highways when it is come we can see that land width is 50 meter carriage way width is 7 meter that is pavement width usually saying that carriage way width longitudinal drain 3 meter uh, and land width is 50 meter okay this is in the case of national highway and state highways this much is the topic and next on the in the next section we are discussing about highway uh, alignment okay and in the next class i will discuss that thank you